Whether you are a complete noob to Blender, or somebody who has forgotten the Blender basics, you click the right video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. When you launch Blender, you'll see a splash screen with some options. For 3D, simply click on General, or anywhere outside the splash screen. It'll work the same. If you want to bring it back, click on the software logo on the top left corner, and select Splash Screen. You can also directly go over to File, New, and then General, to open a brand new 3D file. Now, these different windows on your screen are called editors. Each of them has a different function. You can change any editor to a different editor, by clicking on the top left corner of it. You can also adjust the size of any editor, by bringing the mouse cursor to its border. And then dragging with the left mouse button. Now, you may not need all the editors in your workspace. So to get rid of unwanted editors, take the cursor near the boundary. Then right-click to bring a context menu. Select Join Areas, and left-click on the editor you want to get rid of. You can also split any pre-existing editor if you like. To do that, select either Horizontal or Vertical Split. You can change the split type, even after you've selected them by pressing the Tab key. Left-click to split it, adjust the size if required, and don't forget you can change the editor type to anything you want. The editor where you can see a cube, light, and a camera is called the 3D viewport. This is where the main modeling will happen. To rotate around the viewport, you can click and drag the middle mouse button. Alternatively, you can also left-click and drag over this region to orbit. To move the viewport, you can use the Shift plus middle mouse button. Or use this hand icon to do the same. And to zoom in or out of your scene, simply scroll the mouse wheel or use Control plus middle mouse button to do that without any shakiness. And you can also use this magnifying icon for the same function. To change the view, hold down tilde key and select the view you need to go to. You can also access different views by going over to View Menu and selecting a view under Viewpoint. To select any object, left-click on it. To select multiple objects, hold down Shift while selecting. To deselect an object, click on it again. You can also left-click drag over the objects to box select them and Control plus to deselect. Pressing A will select everything in the scene, and Alt-A will deselect everything. On the left side of the viewport, you have a toolbar. The first one is the Selection tool. If you click and hold it, you will see some more select options. Currently, it's on Box Selection. To move any object, enable the Move tool. With this enabled, if you left-click drag the white circle, you can move the selected object. And left-click dragging these colorful arrows will move the object in the axis where they are pointed. Red stands for X-axis, green stands for the Y-axis, and blue stands for the Z-axis. The shortcut to use the Move tool is G. G stands for Grab, and then left-click to fix the position. If you want to move it to a certain axis, press X, Y, or Z, after G. If it's getting too hard to resist videos on the right, think about the person you'll become after finishing this video. When the Rotation tool is active, left-click dragging the white circle will rotate the object. It will rotate it with respect to your current view and the colors represent the same everywhere. Red for rotating on X-axis, green for Y, and blue for the Z-axis. And left-click dragging on the highlighted area will rotate the object freely. Hotkey to rotate is R. With the Scale tool active, left-click dragging the white circle will scale the object uniformly. And the colorful handles are used for scaling on a certain axis. The shortcut to use this tool is AS. Next one is the combination of all three, with only uniform scale missing from it. To delete an object, press X and select Delete. You can also right-click and select Delete. Then to add a new object, press Shift plus A to bring up the Add menu. Here under the mesh, you can choose any primitive shapes such as cube, cylinder, sphere, and so on. Whenever you add any object, it starts from the same position. This is because of the 3D cursor. To change its position, hold down the Shift key and move it with right-click. Now if you add any object, it'll be added where the 3D cursor is located. You can also enable the tool from the toolbar and left-click to place it somewhere. Currently we are in the object mode, but if we switch it to edit mode, we can do a lot more with the model. The shortcut to toggle between both modes is tab. There are three kinds of selection here, vertex, edge, and face selection. With vertex selection active, you can select vertices of the model. With edge selection, edges of the model. And with face selection, faces. The shortcut is 1 for Vertex, 2 for Edge, and 3 for Face Selection. Now, we've already gone through some of the tools in Object Mode. They work the same here in Edit Mode as well. For example, after selecting a face, you can move it with G, rotate with R, and scale with AS. 
With Extrude tool active, if you left-click drag the yellow handle, you can extrude the selected face. The hotkey is E to extrude, and left-click to confirm. Next is the Inset tool. Bring the cursor inside the circle, and then click and drag to inset. It's similar to Extrude tool, but the new face it creates is on the surface of the selection itself. Now you may have noticed every time we use a tool, a gray box appears at the bottom left. This is called the Operator Panel. We can expand it by clicking on it. You get some more options to play with. Now if we do another thing in the scene, say clicking somewhere to deselect. The panel disappears, but to bring it back you have to press F9. Keep in mind, this will only work for the last operation you did. The shortcut to inset faces is I on the keyboard, and to inset individual faces, press I twice. Bevel tool is used for chamfering the edges. In the operator panel, you have a few more options such as width, segments, shape. You can also bevel vertices. To do that, first enter vertex selection with one, then bevel the selected vertex. You won't see anything yet, but in the operator panel, select effect vertices. The hotkey to use the bevel tool is Control plus B. Then scroll the mouse wheel to change the number of segments. And to bevel vertices, select the vertices. Then press Control B and V, or simply Control Shift B. After activating Loop Cut tool, if you bring the cursor near any horizontal edge, a vertical preview loop appears. And a horizontal loop appears if you bring it near a vertical edge. Left clicking will make the cut. From the operator panel, you can increase the number of cuts. And also slide it with the factor slider. You can create more cuts if you need to. Now, the shortcut to use this tool is Control plus R. Then scrolling will increase number of cuts, and left clicking once will make the cut. Then you can slide it, left clicking again will confirm it, and right clicking will cancel the sliding. To select a loop, you have to select it by Alt left clicking on it. Or select one edge of the loop. Then head over to select menu, select loops, and edge loop. With the knife tool active, you can cut new shapes in the model with left click. Pressing XYZ will make cuts in that direction. And right clicking will detach the knife tool. Pressing Enter will confirm the cut. While making cuts, you can use the hockey control Z to undo cuts. And when we make a cut, it only cuts on one side. But if we want to mirror the cut on the other side, we can press C. If all these seem confusing, look at the status bar for suggestions while using a tool. Another useful tool is the spin tool. Let's select the top face of the cube first. Now switch to front view. Out of the three axes, select the one where you can see the curved handle. Then make sure the 3D cursor is at the same level as the selection. Now click and drag the plus button to where you want to spin. You can further change the distance in the operator panel. Here in this case, it's the X axis. You can change the rotation, and also the number of segments. And if you mark use duplicates, the faces won't be connected. To duplicate any selected object, head over to the object menu, and select duplicate objects. Then left click to confirm the position, or right click to snap it back to its original place. Duplicate linked is similar, but if you modify one of them in edit mode, both of them get modified. If you have multiple objects in the scene, but you want one of them to be influencing the other, you can make it apparent. Select all the objects required. Then select the main object at last, so it is the active one. Yellow outline means it's active, orange means not. Then head over to the object menu, select parent, and then object. Or use the hotkey control plus P, and select set parent to object. By doing this, if you move, rotate, or scale the parent, the children will follow it. But the children are on their own. The parent cannot be influenced by its children. To remove their connection, head over to Object, Parent, and Clear Parent. Or use Hotkey Alt plus P, and select Clear Parent. Keep in mind the second you do that, the child is put back to its original state. But if you choose Keep Transformation, the children will remember the transformation. In parenting, the objects were connected, but not joined. If we want to join multiple objects together, first select them, then head over to Object, and select Join Objects. Now they are just one single object. In edit mode, you can only select the parts of an object which you can see directly. So, 
Instead of rotating the viewport every time you want to select something on the other side, turn on the X-ray view. With this enabled, you can select the other side parts. And what's even more interesting is that, if you select the drop-down, you can control the opacity of the model as well. The hotkey is Alt plus Z. Anything added in edit mode becomes part of the object, whose edit mode you are on. And to select disconnected objects inside edit mode, select a part of it. Then head over to select. Select linked. And linked. Or you can simply hover the cursor over it, and press L on the keyboard. And to deselect it, press Shift plus L on it. Now if you don't want something to be part of this object, you can separate it. Let's say we want this top face to be a separate object. So first select it, and then right-click to bring up the context menu. Under separate, select selection to separate it. In object mode, you can see the face has been separated. And if you want to separate all the disconnected objects at once, you can select separation by loose parts. If you want to make something hidden in the viewport, you can close the eye icon near the desired object, in the outliner. But this won't work if you want to hide a certain part of an object. To be able to do that, head over to the mesh menu, show hide option, and select hide selected. And to unhide it, select reveal hidden. The hotkeys H and Shift plus H will work on both modes. If you ever forget the location of some tool or function, you can press F3. A pop-up will appear, and you can search for the function over in the search bar. To rename any object, double-click on it in the outliner and start typing. Or you can also press F2 on the viewport to rename the selected model. If you have too many objects in the scene, it can be useful to group some of them together. To do that, select the desired objects, then right-click and select Move to Collection. Or use Hockey M to bring a pop-up menu and select New Collection. You can name the new collection. Now you can do, for example, hide all the objects of a collection at once. To add any modifier, you have to click this blue wrench looking icon in the Properties Editor. And then click on Add Modifier. First, we'll take a look at the Array Modifier. This modifier is used to create multiple copies of an object. We can increase the number of copies, we can increase the distance between them, or change the direction altogether. Simply put 0 in the current axis field, and positive 1 in the other axis fields. And in edit mode, if we modify one, all of them get modified. Let's also take a look at solidify modifier. Its job is to add thickness to the selected models. Let's delete the top face of this cube in edit mode to show you better. This is the thickness slider. You can left click drag to change value. Or you can also type in manually. Now the good thing about using modifiers is that they affect the object's geometry in a non-destructive way. Which means the changes you made are not permanent. You can adjust something very easily later on if you want to. But if you click on apply, it becomes permanent. The problem with our old bevel tool is that it's destructive. You cannot change the bevel settings in the future, even if you want to. But this is not the case with the bevel modifier. To better show the next modifier, let's add a monkey first in the scene. Now under modifiers, select subdivision surface. This modifier adds more resolution to the model, making it smoother. But in edit mode, we still have our original vertices, which makes the editing of objects much easier. Now, don't go too high on the subdivision level. Your computer may not be able to handle those many polygons. Instead right-click to bring the context menu and select Shade Smooth. Shade Flat to make it flat. To enter camera view, select this camera icon here. To exit, click on it again. You can also use the shortcut 0 on numpad. Now to move the camera, select it. Then press G to move it. And to zoom in or out, press G, and then the middle mouse button. A quick way to align the camera to your current view, is to press Ctrl Alt and 0 on the numpad together. Or head over to view menu, align view, and then align active camera to view. Another thing you can do is, open up the sidebar by dragging the tiny arrow on right. Then under the view panel, mark lock camera to view. By doing this you can do everything you would normally do without exiting the camera view. Also with the camera selected, you have access to the camera properties.
Now, let's quickly see how to color your model. To add material, head over to Material Properties and click on New. Then under Base Color, pick a color. You can't see anything on your model because you are in solid view. So change it to Material Preview or Rendered View. In Material Preview, the lighting is done through some built-in HDRIs. While in Rendered View, Blender takes the scene light into account. Let's bring the light near the model. When the light is selected, you can go to Light Properties and change its settings such as Strength and Radius. You can add other kinds of light as well in the scene. Now if there is another object in the scene, you can add material to it in the same way. Or from the drop down, you can assign it the same material. And if you want to add material to a certain part of the same object, enter edit mode. Select the parts. And add a new material slot. Hit the assign button. And then you can add a new material to it. We can make her a cute monkey. Or a cruel dictator. You decide. In the output properties, you can set the resolution for the final image. Then in the render properties, you can set a render engine. EV is real time, while cycles will take a bit longer to render. Which is why you will get better results with cycles. Now head over to the render menu and select render image. Once done, under image select save as. Name your render and set the file format. Select the folder where you want it to get saved and finally save as image. After saving the image, you can close the new window. Now if you want to use this model in your future Blender projects, you can right-click on the model name in the outliner and select mark as asset. After doing that, you have to save this file. So go to file, save as, select the file folder where you want it to get saved, and name the file. Then select save as. Then go to edit. Preferences. File paths and under Asset Library, click on the plus icon. Locate the folder, where you saved the Blender file with a marked asset, and select Add Asset Library. Name the library something. Now let's open a new file by going over to File and New. In the new file, change one of the editors to Asset Browser. Under the current file, you'll be able to see the newly created asset library, and the assets inside it. Now you can simply drag and drop it into the current scene. Also, if you edit the model in the current file, the original asset stays the same. Just like models, you can mark the materials as an asset as well. You'll have to right-click on the material and select Mark as Asset. Now obviously this video isn't enough to give you the title of a 3D artist. You need to enroll in a proper beginner course. I can recommend you two good courses, one is by CG Boost and the other by Polygon Runway. They both are great and I've learned a lot from them. There are of course free tutorials on YouTube as well, if you can't afford them right now. I also have a modeling course coming up soon, so to get notified, you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching till the end, never give up, I wish you the best.